you're risking an alliance that could be the key to the Federation's future security on a hunch? It's a good hunch. When I first conceived of this video essay, I was ultimately going to break down why Captain Christopher Pike was one of the greatest diplomats that the Federation had ever seen. After all, while I have accredited him with the ultimate downfall of the Federation in the Golden Age, or at least he was one of the major influences of it, I also think that those same attributes are what made him one of the best captains to explore strange new worlds. However, the more I thought about it, the more I began to really believe that it wasn't just him. He was a great diplomat, don't get me wrong, but there are quite a few, and some of them also led to the before-mentioned downfall. When I sat back and thought about it, I'd have to say the top ambassadors that we observe on screen have to be Christopher Pike, Spock, and Picard. Ironically, all three of which played their role in the decay of Starfleet and its defanging. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not to say that captains like that of Kirk, Sisko, Janeway, Archer, and others didn't play their role, weren't good diplomats in their own rights, just that they weren't so as accomplished as the three that I've mentioned. So with that, the question becomes, who was the greatest? To really break this down effectively, we are going to analyze each of the three. The first would be that of Captain Christopher Pike. Ironically, as of the writing and upload of this video, Pike's story has yet to be completed. He is still captain of the Enterprise with more stories to tell, but that doesn't mean we can't get the baseline for what kind of ambassador he is. Christopher is without a doubt the most empathetic of the three that we have seen. He has shown a wisdom far beyond his actual years and a patience that is on par with the other two. Pike, somehow, is able to intuit what those he is dealing with fill or what they need. The best example of this is in the Strange New Worlds episode, Spock Amok. In this, Pike is able to observe and identify a culture that prizes radical empathy and ultimately negotiates an alliance with them pretty handedly. The Rongovians were rude to the Tellarites, reasonable with us, and deeply logical when talking to a Vulcan. And then it occurred to me, what if this was a diplomatic technique? This epitomizes Pike in a lot of ways. He is able to think on the fly and evaluate the situation, mostly. We'll get back to how he fails in a bit. He is able to reflect the attitudes of the people across the table from him and come up with the best outcome for everyone. This makes him, generally, one of the best captains in Starfleet. He is fit to be out there exploring strange new worlds. I'm sorry things went down the way they did. You tried for something better. Tried and lost. Though, Christopher Pike does have one fatal flaw that I've alluded to. Whether you want to call it a naivete or eternal optimism, Pike consistently believes that he is in a world that plays by his rules. His core tells him that you can have peace, in every instance. We see the failure of this in the Strange New Worlds episode, A Quality of Mercy. Thank you, Captain Pike. If not for your weakness, we would have never known what easy targets your Federation would be. Goodbye. Powering up weapons again. Evasive maneuvers, Erica, patterns eight to three. Pike believes that everyone can be reasoned with, but the sad fact is, at least in the Trek universe, they can't. This critical flaw would plunge the Federation into a war that was endless, that would be fought hundreds of years later. Pike is one of the best captains Starfleet has produced, make no mistake, but as a diplomat, there's a bit left wanting. That went their separate ways. Your brother started the process of reunifying them. And he succeeded. It took centuries after his death, but yes. This leads us into his protege, one Spock. In my opinion, Spock would have two major influences that molded him into who he is, both as a Starfleet officer and a Federation ambassador. That would be the aforementioned Christopher Pike and James R. Kirk. James Tiberius Kirk. The aforementioned optimism and slight naivete would permeate within Spock, but I do believe he was also tempered and changed by the experiences he had with Kirk. This creates a nuanced and complex diplomat. We would see the hope and optimism of Pike when Spock single-handedly negotiated a peace with the Klingon Empire. Last month, at the behest of the Vulcan ambassador, I opened a dialogue with Gorkin, Chancellor of the Klingon High Council. He proposes to commence negotiations at once. The Kittimer Accords 
did have speed bumps, but ultimately was the basis for an alliance that would solidify Federation dominance and peace well into the 24th century. Additionally, Spock creates the seeds of what would become the ultimate reunification of the Vulcan people and the Romulan Star Empire, the two governments melding into one. Interestingly, this action results in the Romulan Star Empire taking its rightful place at a seat on the Federation Council. Spock is quite literally the most influential and arguably most important person in the 23rd and early 24th century, as well as the 32nd, but that's a conversation for another time. However, like before, I do think that the fatal flaw is not seeing the potential danger the galaxy has to offer. The Mary Sue Vulcan created a lasting peace with the Klingons and then moved to specifically dismantle the military elements of Starfleet. He would strip the Federation of its militaristic advantage when it was at its height. Starfleet had a chance to maintain military dominance and only have to contend with the Romulans, at least when it comes to major powers. But Spock ensured that they would always be on the back foot in a fight. Now don't get me wrong, this was actually a very Federation citizen point of view, but I make the argument that it was probably the wrong one. It would lead to many dying during the Federation Borg War, as well as the Dominion War. Speaking of the Borg, that leads us to one Jean-Luc Picard. Pursuant to paragraph 1290, I hereby formally request third party arbitration of our dispute. You have the right. Furthermore, pursuant to subsection D3, I name the Grisellas to arbitrate. You enjoyed that. You're damned right. Just as Spock, I do think he was a product of both Kirk and Pike. Jean-Luc would be the summation of all the ideas come into one. Though I'd argue the heavy influences of Spock and Pike played more of a role than Kirk. Picard would simultaneously be the best and the worst the Federation had to offer. He was the pinnacle of humanity, extremely smart, capable, and most importantly, he was adaptable. He would be entrusted with the highest honor in the Klingon Empire. He would negotiate with the Romulans, Ferengis, and many, many more. His ideology was the culmination of the Enlightenment brought by Spock, which means that he held very extremist beliefs about Starfleet and its role. Starfleet is not a military organization. Its purpose is exploration. But that wrong ideal is kind of what makes Picard one of the best. He held a variety of opinions, as stated, some good, some bad. However, what makes Picard better than the others is not necessarily his diplomatic acumen, though that is what puts him on the list, it's his ability to change. You see, I give Picard a very, very hard time for some of his opinions, but he has also shown an ability to move past them, to grow, to advance. Then why am I here? With the Borg threat, I decided that my officers and I needed to hone our tactical skills. In a crisis situation, it is prudent to have several options. He can see the weakness in some of his arguments and, even to a small degree, change his ideas. He is malleable, which at times has benefited the Federation. And this, for me, is why Picard is probably the best. Pike and Spock are irreplaceable. They form the Federation in ways that can't be understated. However, they also had the inability to change or recognize the real danger of some of their ideas, which would lead to a hundred years war if Pike had been there instead of Kirk and ultimately led to the Federation almost losing a fight with the Dominion thanks to Spock. Picard, during this time, grew. He recognized what was wrong with his ideas and came up with new ones. He changed. He really was one of the best humans that humanity had to offer. But these are my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.